Hello, thank you for joining me. What I'd like to show you in this video is how to get your uh, title block all set up. So the first thing before we get our title block set up is come up with a, a good template. There's no sense reinventing the wheel and something like this when you can go ahead and use something that's already existing and in pretty good shape. And when you uh, get to a company that's going to be using their own title block, you'll typically be using um, you know, you're going to be making modifications to something that they already have, already a template file. So we're going to practice that same thing, and uh, we're going to borrow the title block that comes with it with our book from the Cybex website, and we will go from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to download it, unzip our uh, our file that uh, we got. It's a zip file, and we're going to extract the, the title block out of that that we want. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go to our website, the class website. And you notice in the middle of week eight, uh, this chapter about uh, creating a sheet set with a title block. What we're looking for is this uh, title number here, this file number here, or in name. It's called title block space sp.rfa. RFA is a shortcut or is a file nomenclature for a Revit family file. So it is a family, kind of like uh, what we've used for components. It's a different kind of family because it's uh, mostly a 2D. Uh, uh, it's got some 2D aspect to it, but it does give you the ability to modify that family outside of your Revit project and then load that into your project just like you would any other family that you're modifying. So let's go to the Cybex website. If you go to the top of the website, go to the student resources, it's going to be in here. The publishers of the Revit textbook provide some chapter models and resources to download. And what we're looking for, we're going to click on that link. Well, we're looking for the resources involved in regard to chapter number 16, which is going to be setting up your sheets. And this is what you want. You want this line over here. It's the first one for part one. And if you like, if you uh, can do it on an FTP, that's okay. But typically, everybody's got HTTP. And uh, we're going to go ahead and click on that. Hypertext Transfer Protocol, I think is what it's called as opposed to File Transfer Protocol. But anyways, click on HTTP. What it's going to do is it's going to download it. I don't know if you can see that down here, so let me bring that up just a little bit. You're going to see a file down here, and it's going to begin to download for you. It is a zip file. What you want to do with that zip file is go ahead and open that up when it gets downloaded. And not necessarily open it first, but unzip it first, put it into a file location of your choice, and then we're going to extract the file that we really need. So just to demonstrate that, I have that in my prep folder here, and I also have it under uh, week number eight. And uh, I have a folder in here called Download Cybex. So what I have here is my zip file, which came in as, as raw data. And if you right click on that, go to uh, Extract All. You define the folder that you want to extract it all in. And just go through the steps. There's an extraction wizard here, and yours might be a little bit different. Mine's a uh, Window XP. But what you want to do is you want to define the folder. And if you choose nothing more than just uh, the default settings, it's going to choose a, a folder name by the same name that the zip file comes in. And then you go to next and it goes ahead and uh, creates that. I think what it's going to do, since that name is already here, it's probably going to you know, give me a conflict for that. So it says there's already a folder uh, containing that name, but we're going to go to cancel now. But what you would do is go to next and you'd actually create that folder. And this is what the folder you will get. And what we want is this name down here, toddleblocksp.rfa. If you double click on that with Revit open, it should go ahead and open it up for you. So let's go back to Revit. Click on the Revit interface over here, and my computer is being really slow today, so I may have to terminate my video here pretty soon. But let's see if it goes ahead and opens up that file for us. What it does is it gives us a basic uh, 36 by 24 inch uh, title block, which is a ANSI D size architectural d-size too. And uh, when you get a message like this, project upgrade, this is a one-time upgrade process only. This means it's an older file, it's older than the 2012 version of Revit that we're using, and it just makes a conversion to that. So we're not going to be able to go back to the previous version, but it is going to update us, uh, update it to our um, uh, current version of uh, Revit architecture 2012. So we're just waiting, just waiting. Sorry, it's taken a while. I think the the virus uh, uh, program on my computer is making updates. Gosh, we're almost there. So you notice that we're, what we're doing is we're opening up a Revit family over here as opposed to a Revit project. And we're going to make some additional modifications to our uh, title block here. And we're going to stick with a full-size drawing too, but we're going to make modifications to all this. Sheet identification, we're going to take out the, this logo here, put in our logo, move some of these uh, title block uh, elements 
into its right position. Now we're going to put a logo up here after we stretch that out a little bit. So let's go ahead and close this video out right now and then we'll come back to a, an additional video, video number two, right after this.